Welcome to Solo Melodica. I am Tim Kaiser. On this channel, we reflect and react to music lyrically, looking for uh, redemptive qualities in the gift that is music. If this is your first time joining me, thank you so much for stopping by. If you've been before, uh, thank you for coming back. And if you are a subscriber, blessings to you. Thank you so much. Today, we're continuing our uh, recording schedule of bands who played the Carnival Badness Tour back a long time ago when I saw them in Tenley Park, Illinois. And those bands were We As Human, In This Moment, um, Papa Roach, Skillet, and Shine Down. Today we're going to do Skillet. Now, uh, full disclosure, I'm a Skillet fan, been a Skillet fan since the beginning. Um, however, there are numerous stuff I am unfamiliar with. So although this song we're doing today probably was not played in the concert I saw, because I believe I saw them on the Rise Tour. And this is a newer song. I'm not familiar with it. I read the lyrics. It's awesome, like always. Um, so we're going to do a song. It's going to be a genuine reaction to a song I've never heard before, my skillet. So without further ado, let's get into some rock and roll and uh, let's go. All right, so I'm going to just interject something real quick before we get into the lyrics. So this sounds to me a lot different than Skillet's earlier stuff, which I know, I know bands do evolve, but uh, this seems a little poppier than what I'm used to. And I know John Cooper, who is the lead vocalist and bass player, did a side project, um, pretty heavy side project. I can't remember the name of the band then. I just remember when I lived in Illinois, they played at a place called Mojo's I Love to Frequent, and they came in, never heard of the name before, and they looked at the set list, and it was Skillet, basically. Um, so, but that's different. So this seems a little poppier than typical, but um, it seems like they're writing a hit here, though. So I don't know if it was a hit or not. Probably was used in a lot of uh, sporting events, I'd imagine, but uh, so far, so good, right? Make me feel invincible. I feel, I feel it. 
Wow, that was that was really good. I mean, it's uh, probably not as heavy as what I'm accustomed to. I had mentioned earlier, but uh, we are a lyric channel, so let's talk about the lyrics a bit. So I'm just reading and listening to it um, again. Only my first time hearing it closely, uh, listening to the words, and I'm sure there is deeper meaning than what I'm giving it on a first glance. Listen, that's okay. I get them wrong often, but it's just you know it's fun for me to like. Oh, what does this mean? After not listening to it a thousand times. Um, so Skillet as a band, they've been around for since the late 90s, early 2000, I believe. And um, they are a faith-based band, um, but they also don't just play in churches. I don't think they even play in churches. They're way too big for that. Um, however, they, they play with a lot of different people. And I, again, I saw them different places, but the last time I saw them was with Papa Roach, Skillet, or Papa Roach, Shine Down and um, in this moment, which I, you know, would not classify them as faith-based bands, <laughs> you know, could call me crazy, but, um, so the, the lyrics, just from my first glance listen, is basically a counterpunch to probably some of the nonsense they deal with, because they do tour with a lot of bands, and they're playing in probably in front of hostile crowds, and they're singing songs that, these aren't over on your nose, in your face, that, you know, gouge your eye out, you know, hymnals that they sing. But if you're paying attention, you can realize that they are, they like, they, they honor God. They uh, believe in Jesus and they're, uh, I don't know about all of them. I believe John Cooper, his wife, um, I think Jen Ledger, the drummer, and Seth, the guitar player, who I think is phenomenal. Um, they, I believe they're all Christians, right? I know John Cooper is because he has a podcast and he's, he's on your nose in the podcast for sure. Um, but yeah, he's talking about target on his back, lone survivor lasts. They got me in their sights, no surrender, no trigger fingers go, living the dangerous life. So he's, been, I know, I'm in my interpretation here, that he's probably just getting worn down, right? So just, this is his livelihood, this is his career, this is his passion, this is his calling, and for the whole band, right? But he's the one, Seth and uh, Cooper wrote this song. So, um, John Cooper, not, not, not his wife. Um, so basically, he's putting things on notice. I'm not gonna quit, I'm not gonna give up, right? Uh, he's living the dangerous life. And I think sometimes people think Christianity is boring because they have a boring life, you know. And if you think of the things that happened in the biblical times, um, the Apostle Paul, who wrote, the, you know, the, the thir at least 13 epistles in the New Testament, and this guy was beaten with like the 39 stripes that Jesus took up more, on more than one occasion. He was beaten with rods. He was left for dead. He was shipwrecked. Ultimately, he was beheaded. Um, all the disciples, all the apostles died gruesome deaths except for the apostle John, who had his own set of torture assigned to him. And so, yeah, we may have boring Christianity and it's a safe Christianity, but it's not the case in a lot of places. I mean, I'm, I'm sure believers in the underground church in China or Russia in the, during the Cold War, probably in some of the Middle Eastern nations, I mean, they risk their life every single day. That's one of the one of one of my my uh, the, the thing I it's hard for me to understand when people think, oh, this this Christianity thing is just a made up fairy tale. And most people who say that, and I'm gonna say this, and I take heat every time, but it's genuinely true. Most people say that are lazy academically, and they don't do the hard research, or they have a, a presupposition that it's a fairy tale, and they refuse to do it. It's either laziness or apathy. Um, but the, um, it's, it's not a boring thing, right? It's, it, there's a lot to it. And why would people invent a religion? They had zero to gain from it. They lost everything and ultimately lost their life. And it wasn't like they just, someone gave them a little shot and they went to sleep and never woke up. We're talking about flayed, you know, beaten. Like James was like tossed from the pinnacle of a temple and he landed. And this is the same temple. For those of you who, who've heard Bible uh, Bible scriptures read before when the when the devil was tempting Jesus he took him to the temple and says if you're the little son of God jump up and God will rescue you um, that's the thing that James got tossed off headlong and he wasn't quite dead and then they came out beating death with clubs afterwards so these are people who gave it all right so um, Christianity can be boring if you want it to be or it can be very um, exciting and um, <laughs> explosive uh, let's see Every day when I wake, I'm trying to get out there, knocking me down, chewing me up, spitting me out. Uh, so yeah, that happens, right? You're taking abuse all the time, and that's okay. We should be, we as Christians, if we're not getting pushed around or made fun of 
or criticized, we're probably not doing anything. Read the Beatitudes. For those of you who are listening to this and Christians, you're like, this guy's nuts. Um, read the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, and go through blessed are those and actually test yourself. And, and don't think of it as a way where you can... Um, oh, I can just, I need to improve my peacemaking skills. Oh, I need to improve my hunger and thirst for righteousness. Think of it as a test that you have to pass all the time. Am I doing this? No. Am I doing that? No. Am I being persecuted? No. And it's kind of like one of those things where Jesus is setting us up and saying, you know what? You need me, right? Um, when I need to be saved, you're making me strong. You're making me stand, never will fall, never will end. Shot like a he says, fast, shot like a rocket into the sky, nothing can stop me tonight. <laughs> I can't sing, but it's, he had to say that fast, like he did, because it sounded pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, so we we get that, right? We are empowered. He's empowered. The writer empowered through Christ. I can do all things through Christ, who gives me strength, right? So um, you make me feel invincible. Earthquake, powerful, just like a tidal wave. You make me brave. You're my titanium. Fight song, raising up like the roar of victory in a stadium. Who can touch me because I'm made of fire? Who can stop me tonight? I'm hired, wired. You make me feel invincible. Now, let, let's be honest. We're not invincible, right? We will, we will die. Um, our bodies will die, and then our spirits will be, you know, move on to a different realm. We'll get our new bodies eventually. But, you know, most of us will end up dying. We're not invincible. We can be killed. Um, we can be martyred. Um, but we still can feel like, you know what, I can do this. I, it's hard. It's difficult. Um, sometimes you feel like no one's on your side. And you just, you know, I'm just doing this out of obedience. Sometimes you're coming to a crawl. He's like, you know, I wake up. I'm trying to get up. They're knocking me down. You will get knocked down. Jesus said in John uh, the 16th chapter, in this world you will have tribulation, you'll have anguish, you'll have pain, you'll have suffering, but be of good cheer, I overcome the world. Now, I always think, well, it'd be great if he just took it away from me, but he didn't. So we sometimes have to endure and overcome. Um, so then, yeah, he goes, he's, uh, goes on a course again. Here we go again, I will not give in. I've got a reason to fight. Every day we choose, we might win or lose. This is, a, this is the dangerous life. This is the dangerous life. Christianity, done correctly, is the dangerous life. It's, it's, it's dangerous physically. It's dangerous economically because we're called to be generous. It's dangerous um, politically because you, in the, anymore you can lose your job over things. That are, I could say one thing in this channel today and be totally banned from YouTube forever. Just one thing, one biblical thing. And so you have to be real strategic when you say things because you don't want to say things just to say things to prove that you're, you know, you're all that and you're tough because there, is, there are consequences. It is dangerous that way. It's dangerous academically. There's some really smart atheists out there. There's some really smart people out there who know more than most of us average everyday Christians. Um, and it can be like you feel like you're on an island and you're getting destroyed. I'm reading a book right now called The Return of the God Hypothesis. And I think this is one of the most fantastic books ever written by Stephen Meyer. I love it. And just reading it, he's, he's so intelligent, but he also crafts sentences so well. So I realize I am way below par when it comes to understanding cosmology and biology and physics. Um, but also, it's not like he makes me feel stupid. I just realized I should have paid, paid, paid more attention in high school and probably should have took more than just the necessary classes in science in college. Because um, now I'm thinking, man, this stuff is really important. Uh, because you have the new, the new atheists who are super smart guys. And to counter their arguments, I can't do it. I'm a PhD in cosmology or biogenesis or abiogenesis. Um, and so it can be dangerous that way, right? Um, they say that I'm gone. They say that they've won. The bell has been rung. It's over and done. No, yeah. So people are saying, we got rid of, we got rid of Cooper. We got rid of Skillet. They're, they're nowhere doing this, which would be sad because, you know, we, art's great. Art is, subje art is objective. And that if this is the case, that they're being pushed out, that's terrible. But they didn't. They're still making music. They've been making music for you know, almost 25, I think 25 years, right? About that, maybe more. Um, good, high quality music, touring in, in front of millions and millions of people, selling millions and millions of records when you don't really sell records anymore, right? Uh, you make me feel invincible, so it's kind of going through that again, so we're just repeating it, but this, um, I believe, is probably just a counterpunch song, lyrical, a lyrical counterpunch saying, you know, we're not going to quit. 
And I can tell you from personal experience, listening to John Cooper over the years, seeing him in concert before they were really, really famous, then seeing him when they're really, before they were famous, and then seeing him once they're really famous, they put on a fantastic show. If you get the opportunity to see them, go see them. And for the Christians listening to this, I know there's a few, a few that listen to this, um, check out his podcast called Cooper Stuff, but, or you can see on YouTube or you can get on the podcast channel. He gets into some pretty serious stuff, and he is, I'm sure, I'm sure, he, there's no way around it he could have taken um, some abuse from his stance as he's taken now, um, because he's drawn a line in the sand, and I wish most more preachers had the um, had the peaches that he has when it comes to preaching the absolute truth and not putting up with nonsense. So, anyway, uh, skillet, feel invincible. If this song has added, this video has added value to you. You liked it, please. Uh, if you liked it, like it here. It helps incre increase the algorithm. More people see the video, share it, subscribe, and comment. To, uh, do my best to get to the comments. I'm. It's been a really tough time right now getting to them. I get them to a, occasionally. Um, my wife has been helping as well, so I'm um, getting through them because we really do believe that if you take the time to offer a comment, we should respond. Some of them, you know, some of them are challenging um, because having a conversation back and forth can be difficult when you have you know, over 100 videos, and some of them are well over a year old, and you're wondering, what did I say back in November of 2021? I just can't remember anymore because I'm old. Um, but we do our best, so thank you. We, we really do appreciate it. So um, I will see you soon with a new video. Until then, may the peace of God, the grace of God, come upon you, overwhelm you, and overtake you.